But when you single out one guy like that, and that's the guy that you see that stays over, and he's there for the next several months or whatever until he reaches a certain age or whatever, that's the guy that you see. And that, that kind of you know, puzzles you. What's going on? What's happening Describe here? Describe that And you see look. this guy playing, and all of a sudden when you knock on Michael's bedroom door and you walk in the room, mm -hmm. the child is entirely different. He's not the same little child. Not the same innocent? No, child? he's not the same little child anymore. Was the glazed look a predatory look? Was it a look of, I am attracted to that one, I want that one? I hate to sit here and say yes, but that's the impression I got. That's the impression I would always get. And that's the impression I didn't like. And that's what I didn't like seeing. And if you must remember, I wrote a book a couple of years ago because I wanted to put a stop to this because I knew it would come to this. And I didn't want to see Michael hurt. I thought eventually, perhaps he would stop this. But when you're raised like we were in a dysfunctional family, perhaps he couldn't stop. He had nowhere to turn. He was confused. So in your heart of hearts, you believe. But this believe... would totally change. You have to remember, he was just playful and just whatever. Then you come in the room, and he's like this all of a sudden. Michael, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Nothing. The same little boy that was jumping up and down on the bed and bouncing around and having fun and, oh, let's go to the candy store, let's do this and let's do that, was entirely different. You would see him sneaking there, looking around and running to the store after a while. That was part of the property when I say store, so they won't get the wrong impression. Right, the private stock of candy and other things. It was just goodies. a big store that had everything you ever wanted as far as candies for kids. Okay, you say that at the age of 13 he then rejected the children? That was basically the, the oldest. And the youngest? As far as nine years old, eight or nine years old, from you, what, from what I've, I've seen at home. Okay, from what your own eyes, you are now saying, testifying in, in a way, that you saw your brother with eight and nine-year-olds in his bedroom staying over night after night after night. You saw that? Yes, and not coming out of the room. Yes. Did you ever see Michael behave, other than the glazed look, the predatory look that you described, did you ever see him behave in an untoward or improper manner? Did he, for instance, fondle the children? No, I've never eyes? seen him do that, no, no. So you'd have to say you've never actually seen him no, molest a child? I've never seen him do any of that, absolutely not. Why then are you so convinced in your heart that he's guilty? Because of what I've seen, because of what I know because of what my mother has done, because of what she showed me, because of the things that she said to me about Michael that I refused to believe at the time. I, w I refused to believe my mother. My mother actually was screaming at me one day, and I ran to the room, and I frantically, I thought something was wrong, something had happened, and she was showing me this check. And I said, yes, so what about it? And she says, well, look at it. And the check, of course, was a one, and lots of zeros behind it. And she says, Latoya, this is a million dollars. I said, so? She goes, but look who it's written to. And of course, at that particular time, it was written to the last name of the little boy that he was with all that time. But it was written to the father and not the little boy. It was in the father's name. And she called him a very bad name after that, Michael. She called him a very bad name. And there was another check behind that. And I said, Mother, please, let's leave. I said, we shouldn't be in here. I don't you want You were in Michael's room. Yes, yeah, she was in his, actually, it was closet. It was his closet. And the two of you were in Michael's room, and you and she removed a, a canceled check and showed it to you? She was in his closet, that, which is in his room, yes. And you recognized the name? Yes. Uh, don't tell us the name, but describe the person to whom it was written, the father. I don't know the father. Was he a show business person? No. The father supposedly is a garbage collector, a, a, or was a garbage collector, I should say, at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Now, if he has a million dollars, he's probably not any But then, I, at that particular time, yeah. At that particular time, though, I told my mother, I said, Mother, you don't know why he wrote this check to him. Maybe they're having problems. I said, you have no idea. But she proceeded to call him a terrible name. What was the terrible name? She called him, excuse my expression, she called him an effing faggot. That's what she called him. And I said, Mother, don't say that. And she said, that's exactly what he is. He's always been that. And it makes you wonder. It made me think. But I, I didn't like when she said that simply because I didn't believe that. However, if Michael is gay, there's nothing wrong with it. I see absolutely nothing wrong with it if he is gay. That's his lifestyle. That's what he chooses. But, however, there is something wrong with bothering little kids and molesting little kids or spending so much time with them, yes. And you believe your brother has been molesting little boys? I believe something has been going on. No, no, no. I'm asking you very specifically now. You have to be very careful. 
Do you believe, LaToya, as you sit there, that your brother has been molesting little boys? Geraldo, I have never seen him do it. I have never seen them in the act. But deep down in my heart, I have to tell you, yes. LaToya strikes back, the focus of the special edition of Geraldo. Accidents. And I'll tell her to her face she's lying, and she knows it. She lies all the Mr. time. Mr. Jackson, Joe Jackson? Yes, yes, she lies all the time. This is how they make their living, by lying. And I think it's a shame for the press to go around and, and, and help them in their lies. We are joined by LaToya, the young lady just branded a liar by her own mom and dad. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction when you heard them say that after your press conference? I'm very used to that. They said my book was a lie. My book was, and eventually the world began to believe that, gosh, this girl wasn't lying. She was telling the truth. My brother Randy was put away for six months, three or six months, I can't recall exactly how long, for abusing his wife and his daughter. And you think that Randy was abusive because he had grown up in a so-called dysfunctional? I think home? that it's a pattern. In most cases, it is a pattern that that does happen, but I can't exactly say that's why he did it or that's why he was doing that. Okay, I want you to react specifically to your own mother, your own father, mm -hmm. saying they would say it to your face that you're a liar, Latour. I would love for them to do that more than anything else. I've asked them to do that. I would love to speak to them because they know better. They know the truth. When was the last time you my spoke mother, to My mother, when I wrote my book, I must say, before I wrote anything about abuse, I asked my mother why my father did this to me, because I went to her for help. I wanted to know the answers, because I had so many questions. I was so confused, Geraldo. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't think. I couldn't do anything properly. And I went to her and said, Mother, please, you must tell me, why did Joseph do this to me? And why did you watch him do this to me? And the answers that she gave me was, LaToya, this is something that you keep in the family, and you don't tell anyone else. It stays in the family. It goes nowhere else. I said, but Mother, just tell me why he did this to me. I need to know. She would not tell me. I called again. The next time I called, she says, LaToya, your father did this because he was sick. He didn't realize he was doing these things to you guys when you did it. Your mother said that? That's exactly what she told me. Then I spoke to her again. And then she tells me my father doesn't recall any of this. And she says, and neither do you, so forget it. And if you mention it, I'll say you're a liar. And the whole world will believe that you're a liar. And that's exactly what she's doing today. How long have you and your family been estranged? How long have you been separated? I separated myself from the family when they continued to deny the fact that child abuse exists in our family. So only after you wrote the book? Yes, because I feel that if they go on condoning this, it's very, very wrong. I cannot be a part of this because I'm not going to sit there and see children being abused and molested by other people and them agreeing with it and saying it's okay because they want everybody to think that the Jackson family is one of these perfect, happy families and loving families, which is very untrue. We were never that kind of a family, but the world always believed it because I guess in the black population, they wanted some kind of family that was like the Kennedys and they wanted somebody that they can emulate or, or, or look at and say, gosh, I'd like to be like that family. And that's what we portrayed. That's what we were told and taught to be. Why do your brothers and sister feel that you're lying? Why do they say you're lying? Why do they stick with their parents if what you say is true? I wish they would come out and speak the truth. They don't come out and speak the truth. I, um, I must tell you that Michael supports, my brothers don't work at this particular time. They haven't worked in a long time, Geraldo. Jermaine, Michael, Michael, of Randy, course, Marlon. Michael, of course, works. And Janet, of course, works. However, Michael supports my mother, and a lot of them live in the house. So that means he's supporting whoever lives in the house. But your basic statement is that the reason they stay silent is that they fear harming the golden goose, Michael Jackson? I would think so. Definitely. He buys silence. Definitely, yes. You're he, calling your own family collaborators then to no, child molesters. Well, I know Michael definitely buys silence. That I do know as for fact. Not just to the family, but with for others. For anything as well. he wants, definitely. He, he pays lots of money. Would you say that your own siblings then are collaborators to a child molester? Yes, absolutely. Actually, what I'd like to do now, run, run one of the the first of the Neverland clips where Michael is denying the charges against him. Here's, here's from your brother's own mouth, his reaction to the 
the charges, not just your charges, of course, but the charges leveled by the 13-year-old and his family. Let's roll that. Don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. I have been forced to submit to a dehumanizing and humiliating examination by the Santa Barbara County Sheriff Department and the Los Angeles Police Department earlier this week. They served a search warrant on me which allowed them to view and photograph my body including my penis, my buttocks, my lower torso, thighs, and any other error that they wanted. They were supposedly looking for any discoloration, spotting, blotches, or other evidence of a skin color disorder. I want to get into, first of all, your reaction to his live press conference from Never Neverland. Did when, you see it live? When I saw that, yes, I did. When I saw that, that was very touching to me. I was very torn. I was hurt. And when I saw that, the first thing I thought of were my parents. I didn't want to blame Michael for what he did. I didn't want to say, I know that when he says that he's innocent, I know that he isn't. He is not. No, he is not. He's not innocent at all. However, I blame my parents more than anything, more than anything else, because of the way we were raised. I don't blame Michael, even though we're responsible for our actions. I don't really blame him all the way for this, Geraldo. You have to understand, Michael is a very confused, mixed up person. You guys see him entirely different. You see this, this I guess I should say, icon or whatever on television who's doing all these wonderful things, but you don't see the person that's very sad and that's very confused, is very mixed up, that cries and comes to you, he doesn't know what to do. And what does he turn to? Doesn't have friends. Here's Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Latoya's no, 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 reaction no, to Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Her reaction to Michael's claim of a skin disorder, vitiligo, remember he told Oprah? No, the reason I said that about, well, I didn't say well, anything I about Elizabeth Taylor. We'll be back in two but, minutes. Latoya Jeff. Learn how to fight back against me on News 13 at 6. Jerry Springer, son of immigrants, big city mayor, talk show host. See the difference a lifetime can make. Weekday mornings at 11. Tell me, what 35-year-old man is going to take a little boy and stay with him for 30 days and take another boy and stay with him for five days? in a room and never leave the room. How many of you out there are 35 years old? How many men are out there? How many would take little kids and do that that are 9, 10, 11 years old? I love my brother, but it's wrong. I don't want to see these kids hurt. Latoya Jackson, live in our studio. Elizabeth Taylor has stood by your brother in a way some would say you have not. Do you think she is being a hypocrite? When this first happened, Geraldo, people should stop and really think. The first person to Michael's aid was Elizabeth Taylor. If you stop and think, Michael should have called my parents. He should have called my mother. She should have been there. However, he didn't. He called Elizabeth Taylor. Now, I just left Europe, and I left the Alps. And there are lots of friends there that I have that live there. Elizabeth also lives there. And a lot of people there are doing a lot of talk, and they're doing a lot of whispering from what Elizabeth is telling them and what she's talking about and what she's saying. Now, she's saying to them that what LaToya said about the million dollars is not true. She goes, I know for a fact that Michael has paid each one of his little boys $200,000 and not a million dollars. And this is what she's going around telling everybody. Now, I feel if she's a friend, she shouldn't say anything. Don't do that behind his back. Do you, LaToya Jackson, charge that Elizabeth Taylor is speaking out of both sides of her mouth when it comes to your brother Michael? From what the people are saying there, from what everybody's saying. Yes, she is. Doesn't it sound logical to you that that's what she's doing? I asked the questions here. <laughs> <laughs> Michael mentioned the skin disorder, the vitiligo that became famous, actually, after his Oprah interview. Does your brother, to your knowledge, have vitiligo? To my knowledge, I've never known of a skin disease in my family. 
Are you saying that your brother is lying about having a skin disorder? I'm saying I've never known of a skin disorder in my family whatsoever. Okay. Now, you and Michael seem to have very similar complexions. Yeah. Do you have vitiligo? Absolutely not. How did it come to be? How did what come to be? Y your complexion. I have always been this complexion. <laughs> no, it's true. It, I have always been this complexion. All right. Hold, pardon me, pardon me. There is behind Latoya an old family portrait. Turn around, Latoya. You can see it. Uh, yeah. Is that you sitting with... Uh, that's me, over there at the end. On the, the right-hand side. Yeah, in the end, that's me. Okay, wait, now, this is interesting. That's this is me. an unretouched photo blown up. That's right. Here that's is me. Latoya. That's me. Next to which brother is this? That's Randy. Okay, next to Randy, mm -hmm. no, there is a... Uh, now, pan... pan or right, follow me here, Chris. Here's Latoya. Now pan over to Michael. Can you... There's Michael. Mm-hmm. So you think that he has bleached his skin? Do I think he's bleached his skin? I, um... I don't know in detail what exactly he's done, but I do know what he has been doing. Now, since I've left home, I don't know what he's done since then. I have no idea. What about your parents' allegation in that brief clip we saw the segment before this one that says that essentially you are saying these terrible things about Michael because your career is not soaring exactly and that you're doing this basically to pay the bills? No, that's totally untrue. I would never do, why would I want to hurt him? Why would I want to do something like that? I wouldn't want to hurt him. All right, I wonder, I know there's all kinds of questions in the audience. Is there one of you who believes Latoya? All right, stand up, stand up. Tell us. It seems that she and Janet are the only ones who are financially independent, so why not come out and say the truth? If everyone else is dependent upon Michael for money, they're not gonna come out against him. It's true. We'll be right back. Victoria Jackson. More revelations to follow. No validity to what she is saying is absolutely not true. My brother is not a child molester, and this is a way for them to continue to make money. And I am very, very upset now. This has got to stop. Jermaine Jackson condemning his sister for her outspoken comments, her very controversial comments about her brother, Jermaine saying she's doing it for money, Jermaine saying this has got to stop. Did you feel threatened by that statement? Have you ever been threatened by your own family? Yes, I have been. Can you tell us what happened? They have tried several times to kidnap me, which I wrote in my book, which they know about. and. It's funny because at that particular time when I was told that they were going to do this, I did the same thing. My response, I laughed. I said, I'm the daughter. I said, how could they do this? This is crazy. What are they going to do with me? Lock me away, sedate me? This is crazy. I laughed. I thought it was funny. It didn't make any sense to me. However, it was not funny when it happened. And then it happened again. It was not funny. They actually kidnapped you it twice? It was very, very serious. No, they tried. They made attempts. Where? They got very close. Where I was staying at... Um, the house in New York, Tom's Plaza. Okay, I don't want to uh, beat the vitiligo skin coloration thing to death. I don't think it's terribly <laughs> relevant, but I had heard that you believe that your brother is taking some injections and that the injections are a prescription medication and that the prescription is written in the name of someone on the security force. Had you heard that story? The injections, no, that's not true. The injections are not true. I do know, it's, I feel like I'm just telling everything, and I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't, I don't want to do that, because what... Tell what, us, tell us, please. This, this whole thing started out trying to defend children who abuse, but it goes on to other things because it, you ask me other questions. It does. And that's how we get into situations okay. like this. But the and answer to they, that one that's is... That's how they know all these things right. about my family because and then you want, to, you want the answer to these questions. I want the answer to that one. He had a doctor prescribe medicine for him. What the medicine was, was something for his skin. And I recall them coming in very large quantities, boxes. Yes, they were written in someone else's name. And he would apply it. 
and I would say, Michael, you don't know what this is. This could give you cancer. You have no idea. I got a medical book so I could look up the names that were on it to find out what he's putting on. When I got the book and I got the medicine together, there was nothing on the medicine. What do you mean? In other words, there were no ingredients. There was nothing there for me to read, to go by. And I said, you don't know what you're doing to yourself. You can get cancer, skin cancer or anything. But it didn't matter to him. What did he say? He's never been happy. He's always been unhappy with his looks all his life, all his life. So the medication was a, a cream? It was a cream. It was in a cream form, yes. Mm -hmm. And you saw form. him apply it? Oh, yeah. So that you have firsthand... Oh, yes, definitely. I saw, the, I, saw I know the guy who would bring the boxes over. And I said, why are they in his, this other person's name? And who was that person? A security. But the guy who brought it over was not a security. He was just a worker, which you guys know his father very, very well. Oh, don't tease us. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the father? Come on. <laughs> See, but you must remember, he, he had no idea what he was picking up. His orders were, the instructions were, go pick this up. And he was, or is? Marlon Brando's son. Marlon Brando's son, yeah, the one who is accused of murder? Years. No, not him. The no, other I son. Went, I went to school with him. No, the other one. He worked for us for years. What's his first name? Miko. Is? Miko. Miko Brando. Miko Brando. The prescriptions were in his name? No, the prescriptions oh, were not in Miko's this. name. Yeah. The prescriptions were in security's name. Gotcha. And I don't know if I should say his name or not. Why not? Come on, Geraldo. <laughs> See, this is what happens. Well, you, you get on here and you try, you try to defend children who are being abused, and you ask me about all these other things. Okay. And I don't want to get in trouble with security. We'll be right back. Latoya Jackson. Jackson. She sang some incredible things about her brother and her own life. Yes. I, I have to say, child abuse, of course, is a very serious thing, as we all know. I think what you're trying to do is exceedingly brave. It cannot be easy because it is a family that we've all enjoyed and we all look up to. And I guess one of my questions would be, what, how do you wish your brother, Michael, to react to some of the things that we are talking about today? What would you like him to do or to say uh, in terms of everything that you believe about your brother and that we've been talking about on this show? I would like for him to go seek help because I know that's what he needs more than anything else. That's what I like more than anything else and that's what I want him to do. I would like for him to admit it and say, I don't know why I did these things, but I did them and I need help and I know I need help and that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I would like to see him say, because that's what he needs. He only needs help. That's all he needs. Michael's a good person, because he's... Well, I wanted to know, did you ever once try to help your brother? Because to me, it seems like, you know, you have no problem just throwing him down in a rut. You know? I'm I not mean, throwing trying him to in stab the rut. him in his back. No, that's, that's a wrong impression. That's not true. You're very wrong. As I said, that's, if, if, if she was listening, and if she was intelligent enough, she would know that the reason, that the reason, the reason I'm speaking out is to help him. That's what I sat here and said. That's why I'm speaking out, is to help him. And if you listen carefully, you have to understand these things. If I didn't speak out, I wouldn't be helping him. What if it was your little brother that he was doing this to? It's terrible. You have to listen. I have a few things to say. I just want to say that when I first heard these allegations, I didn't want to believe it because mm. he's such a sweet Most guy. Don't. I see two reasons to believe you coming here today. One is that you're apparently very reluctant to put that title of child abuser on your brother. I think that if you wanted to try to hurt him, you would be real quick to say that. First, two, the pain of losing your own family mm -hmm. over something like this is tremendous. How do you know? I just know. 
<laughs> and and I feel that this woman sitting up here would not be able to do that if it was not true. And to that woman that just jumped on you for this, mm -hmm. I just want to say that it is not Latoya's responsibility to take, to take, let me finish. It is not, it is not her. Let her finish, please. She's doing the best she can now. This is a very scary topic that comes up in families, and denial is strong. Mm -hmm. And okay. you seem to me that you speak from firsthand knowledge. And I have an answer to her question. I have tried very hard to help him. But you can't help a person. And what people must understand, I didn't do this to him. He did this to himself. And they must remember that. We'll be right back. <laughs> Latoya Jackson will bring out her controversial husband, Jack Gordon, coming up. For free tickets to The Geraldo Show, write Geraldo Tickets, 524 West 57th Street, New York, New York. Speak Up America, we want to hear your comments and show ideas. Give us a call at 1-900-SPEAK-UP. Let us know what you're thinking. We'll record your message to play in a future broadcast. We may even call you to be a guest on a show. So call 1-900-SPEAK-UP. Don't forget, the call costs $1. We'll be right back. Any disgusting statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. These statements about me are totally false. As I have maintained from the very beginning, I am hoping for a speedy end to this horrifying, horrifying experience to which I have been subjected. Latoya, your comment, was he lying? Well, let's look at it this way, Geraldo. He says he wants a speedy recovery of all of this. And I'd like to see this over with very quickly, too, because I know that he's going through a lot, a lot of pain. I know I am, too, as well, because, it's, as you were told, you know that it's, it's very difficult for me because I'm in the middle of this, and I can't even sleep at night. I, I Sometimes I go cry, and I don't know what to do, but then I think about the kids, and you can't let them go on doing this to the kids. But if he wants a speedy recovery, not to knock anybody down or anything. Why are they postponing every time he's supposed to go up? They keep postponing it and pushing it back. If you want it speedy, you, you get it over with and get it out the way and go on with your life. Well, I'm not sure what your career is, you know, but exploitation is lucrative business. And it seems to me that every time we see you in the public eye, you're in Playboy Exposed or talking against your family. And I don't know, I don't know what your career actually is. But I feel that if you love your brother and you care about him, you would try to, would have tried to have solved this back in 1986 privately with just him. Because if he had candy stores and he had all other kinds of little fun things going on, you, he could afford it, you know, he could have afforded an analyst. And, you know. But you're, you're right, I have done Playboy, but it was my choice to do it. And I had the right to do that. Your question of, and your answer to your question about Michael, I think I answered that a bit earlier. I have tried to help him, but you have to, you, you can help a person as much as you want, but they have to be willing to want to help themselves. Now you're saying you came from an abusive family. I'm sorry, family. I can't hear you at all. You're saying that you came from an abusive family. So why, I want to know, why would you stay in an abusive relationship? You're talking about her marriage? Yes. First of all, it's, it's not an abusive relationship. Uh, what you read in the papers, yes, that was very, very true. And it was because he was on medication, very strong medication. Why makes you think he won't Because he, wait, he had, wait, he, the question, the question was? Why makes her think she, he won't do it again? He won't hit her again. Well, You're because, referring to the, the celebrated or very notorious incident between uh, Latoya and her husband, Jack Gordon, yes. uh, during which, uh, he beat her pretty good. Yes. It was the early part of 1993. He's going to hit you again and yes, again. It won't stop. In, in most cases, that's very true. Yes, you're right. However, um, he has a very bad case of cancer, and the doctors couldn't do anything else for him. And they said, this is it. I'm sorry. There's nothing else we can do. 
and they gave him a certain medication and they did tell him his behavior would be very bizarre and very unusual and he would go through anger and different, his, he would just flick. And that's exactly what he did. And I was very shocked because it never happened. Right, here he, he is. It. This is Jack Gordon, Latoya's husband. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. More with Jack as soon as we come back. Planted by Weston's historic landmark, the Algonquin. Located steps from New York City's theater and shopping districts now offering exciting getaway leisure packages. The Algonquin Hotel. Promotional fees have been provided by... I hate my wimpy toilet bowl cleaner. Introducing new X14 toilet bowl cleaner with two times the chlorine cleaning power of the others. Latoya joined by her husband and manager, Jack Gordon. But it is, uh, is it fair to say, Latoya, uh, an unromantic relationship? Or maybe at least an asexual, uh, non-intimate relationship? I'm trying to give you the words, the... Yes, uh, I know what you're doing, yes. I know exactly what you're doing. You and Jack don't sleep together. He's my best friend. No, we do sleep together. We sleep together now. Again, see, you try a euphemism, you fail. <laughs> you and Jack don't no. have a sexual relationship. No, we did not sleep together for a while. Now we're sleeping together. In the same bed? Yes. You... <laughs> the audience at least appreciates that. So, do you and Jack live together as man and wife? No, actually, actually, we just, we just started sleeping together. We just started sleeping together. You have a sexual relationship? Raldo. Have you consummated the marriage? No, it has not been consummated yet. Jack, isn't that unusual? <laughs> it is. It is very unusual. Is that one of the reasons you snapped, that you didn't have an intimate relationship? <laughs> not really, Geraldo. But putting that aside, I have to say for Latoya's sake, somebody's got to really speak up against child abuse. If she remains silent, who then will speak up against it? I mean, you can attack her all you want, but truthfully, she's the only person I know on the earth that's got the courage to stand here in front of a national audience and defy this family, the wealthiest family on earth, the biggest entertainment family the world has ever known. Do you think she wants to get beaten up every single day because of this? The answer is absolutely no. Why do you do it? Because you gotta have that? other children. Why did you beat her, her up? I'm sorry? Why did you beat her up then? That really has nothing to do with children. <laughs> I, Geraldo, Geraldo, ma'am, I hit her in the nose. I did. I went to jail. I did. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. I did. I did. I, but that, why did you hit her for? I can't answer that because I don't know. He, he doesn't know because he huh. was on medication. Has he really done it? <laughs> you know what it sounds like? Has he done it before or since? No, he has never done it before. He has never done it before. He has never done it since. Jack, are you as bizarre a partner for LaToya as the Jackson family says you as, are? As far as? In terms of your erratic behavior, in terms of your being uh, Machiavellian and manipulating your wife, uh, your kind of being a puppet master to your spouse? I think I'm a very good manager. But other than that, no, I'm, I'm not manipulating. You, no. you say a very good manager. There is a question, how LaToya actually supports herself or her career? What, what is the, where do you make your money? I guess that's the question. LaToya performs all over the world, in every country in the world. We just returned from 12 See, nations. It's interesting. it's interesting because people don't understand what I do and because I don't work in America. I work in Europe, and I've had records in Europe that have been very, very successful. And we just finished a tour for uh, three months, and we went to 12 nations. 12 nations. And we just got back, what, last night, actually. Last night, we just from got London back Village. from Europe. And that's basically what I do, and I work every single day of the night, and that's how I support. But you guys don't know this, because you guys don't know this, because I don't put records out in America, and I don't do anything here, so you know nothing about but it. But also, Latoya had a book. It's a European show. <laughs> Latoya has a book. Latoya has a, a television show. Latoya's got an exercise video. I mean, Latoya keeps very, very busy. What, Jack, do you think the future of your marriage is? Probably it'll wind up in divorce within the next two or three years. Oh. 
I... Uh, quiet, please. Give me a break. Give me a break. Did you hear that? Yes. He's predicting that you're going to get divorced. Ask him why. Why? Because it was never meant to be. This entire thing was never... Yeah, we were yeah. thrown together like two little cows. I mean, her, her book this, was true, whether this, you believe her book you guys, or not. This is very strange. This is a very bizarre situation. And if you don't understand it, it's so, it's so complicated, so complex, it's hard to understand. Right. When I told you about the kidnapping attempts, that's They're when true. he took me and he married me. I was on stage performing in Reno, Nevada, and he took me off the stage and he says, get in the car. And he says, which, I have five securities with me. He says, which one of the securities you want to take with you? And I just point, I said, that one. I said, where am I going? He says, we're going to get married. I said, what for? I said, I don't even like you. You're just my manager. And I was screaming, and I didn't want to get married. And it took forever. It's supposed to take five minutes. and Because in Vegas, you get married in five minutes. And, Reno. In Reno, Nevada. And the lady, of course, she got so tired of me running out and walking out. She says, listen, I'm not going to start over again. I'm just going to continue where I stopped. She wouldn't even kiss me on the wedding day. <laughs> Has she kissed we, you yet? We oh, didn't yeah. see each other <laughs> since then. Any volunteers to kiss Jack? Well, listen. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I have to protection. I have to summarize. We're out of time. Let me let me that say. That was for protection. Latoya, if your allegations are true, you are truly one of the most heroic figures uh, in recent time. If, however, the allegations are false, and time certainly will tell, mm -hmm. then you're one of the most bizarre people of all time. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. I think that since you began speaking some months ago, and the book was first written. You seem to me, although your conduct, your relationship, your husband are bizarre, more credible now, if anything, than you did then. Yeah. But your brother is still innocent unless and until proven guilty. That's right, you're guilty. absolutely right. We hope for the truth to come out. I thank you, Jack, you too, Jess, you. and you folks at home, thank you for watching. The Jackson Soap Opera continues. See you next time. Bye-bye. Later, Dom DeLuise will join us. Ever since five young brothers from Gary, Indiana, began singing together in the 1970s, the Jackson family has produced more hits than any other singing siblings. But now, a new autobiography by LaToya Jackson reveals some shocking details about growing up with Michael Janet and the rest of the Jackson clan. LaToya Jackson joins us from our studios in New York. The book is LaToya, Growing Up in the Jackson Family, published by Dutton. Are you surprised at all the attention this is receiving? Larry, are you speaking to me? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you very well. Lots to offer. In other words, he's liked because of his ability. Of course. But he also has to have a quality. The public, you don't last this long in front of the public unless you have something else, too. Well, I think he's smart enough to know what, what the meaning of longevity is, and that's what he tries to give them, just a little bit of time to make sure it lasts forever. <laughs> So he's aware of the mystery of him. Oh, yes. Are you saying he works at that? He's a very mysterious person. Yes, he does. He, and, and that's another reason why no one really knows the real story or the true story of the family, simply because there yeah. is that mystique that no one wants anybody to know in the family what really goes on. And it's forbidden in our family to really say anything about what happens behind the closed doors. Wasn't it hard for you to do this? I mean, you may be helping a lot of people, no, but wasn't no, it hard? No, no, it wasn't hard for me to do it all, simply because I looked at it very, very differently. I looked at it, it was therapy for me in a sense, because it released all the tension that I had in my body, in my system all these years, and I felt that it would help my brothers and sisters, as well as children that are being abused today, even adults that are being abused, because I think the first step is really to speak out, and that's why I'm doing it, because silence only encourages, even more so. So, no, it wasn't difficult. And it's not a book to be vindictive or, or to get revenge because I could have written far more worse things, but I did not. They're very meaningful and very truthful, and I tried to explain it in a way that people will understand and try to understand why these things took place and why they happened. You mean you could have put down more than you put down? Yes, definitely. I, I could have put down far more. You have to realize, Larry, that we lived a very, very unhappy life. There were so many of my brothers and sisters who talked about and, and made attempts of committing suicide. It just goes to show you that it's really terrible that we, 
our, the, our family and our lifestyle and our home, the environment we lived in, would actually drive you to do something like that. We did. Father had another family? Yes, he, he, he does. My father does have another family. Like, like a second uh, a mistress and children and... Yes. Mm -hmm. Your mother always aware of this? My mother's very much aware of it. As a matter of fact, she was very disturbed by it at one point. When uh, they lived on the other side of town, and he actually moved them right up under our nose, in the same neighborhood, my mother was very hurt by it. However, when I, I did another show, my mother denied everything. She said he didn't have a second family. She mentions this in her book also as well, that he has a second family. So it's, it's really, I find it so strange that, but it's very typical also of a dysfunctional family, how they will lie for one another and pretend like these things didn't exist and didn't happen. Why do you think your mother takes all this for all these years? You know, I don't know, Larry. So many times we have asked Mother, Mother, why? 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 That's one of Michael's favorite questions. What do you see in him? Why, why, why do you stay with him? How can you live with him for so long? Why? Why? We don't know the answer to this. She won't what did answer. she say? She won't answer. She will not answer us. Now, you, you have a marriage in name only because of a, a fright. You're, you're married to your manager, but you, it's not a love relationship, right? No, it's strictly artist-manager. And why did you have to marry? Because of the attempts, the kidnap attempts that my family had made on me. And I thought it was pretty outrageous and, and, and bizarre and unusual. And I didn't believe them in the beginning. I thought it was crazy. I said, don't believe that. They would never do a thing like that. I'm their daughter. But it actually took place so many times. They tried to kidnap you? Oh, yes. And For what reason? Basically to stop the book. So why did you have to get married because of that? The reason why is because when they did it, the times they did, they had their lawyer there with them. So if you were to call the police or anything, they would say it's a family matter. And the policeman, of course, naturally couldn't do anything about it. The lawyer was there, a civil matter. And the lawyer eventually told why they were there. He says, yes, they were there to kidnap her. And, and, of course, nationally, we knew that anyway. However, um, by my manager taking me and marrying me, they could no longer say that because he could say, now I can press charges against you if you try to make this attempt again because she no longer belongs to you, but she belongs to me. But it was truly a surprise to me because I was performing in, in Reno, and when I got off the stage, he said immediately, come on, let's go, I where are we going? He said, you're going to get married. I said, to whom? He said, to me. He said, this is to protect you. And I didn't want to, but I understood after he explained everything. Then it all fell into place properly. Uh, what will happen if you fall in love with somebody? Nothing, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get divorced and then... Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to do that when we think everything is fine, for sure. Uh, where are you? Are you entertaining all the time, Latoya? Are you working a lot? Constantly. I'm working basically almost every single day. Uh, work big clubs, small rooms, what kind of... No, a lot of television appearances. And um, I, right now, at the moment, I've been doing fairs, and the fairs have been very, very good. They've been great, actually, because the attendance have been 90,000, which is very, very unusual, yeah. and we, we're very happy and surprised about it. And then you get some that are 50,000, and the last night it was 60,000. And then, of course, there are some that I've played that have been as far as 10. So it, it kind of depends on where it is, actually. Have you ever sung with your brothers? Yes, I have. Uh, appeared with them? Mm -hmm. in, in Vegas years ago. Would, would you like to do that again? Yes, I'd love to. It's, it was a lot of fun. Being together with the family is a lot of fun. It, th those are happy times when we're together as brothers and sisters. But of course, <laughs> I think the sad times come in whenever my father walks through the door. Yeah. Did Michael ever suggest like a family reunion on stage? Not, no, no. Might not be a bad idea commercially, although do you think they'd perform with you now? I'm sorry, Larry. Do you think they would perform with you now based on the book? With me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. I, I can't answer that. I don't know if they're, they're upset about this book or not. I certainly hope not. I hope that they can see and understand because they know what went on in the house. They understand totally what, what happened. It's a matter of just really speaking out and saying, Thank you, I'm glad you finally admitted it. Somebody did. Now we can really live our lives and breathe and feel free about everything. Has your father threatened you at all since the book? <laughs> yes, there has been, yes. A uh, personal threat uh, to harm you? Yes, there has been. As a matter of fact, it, is it because you know something? or No. Yes, we got it last night. What, what happened? Larry, I don't want to say. But it was a threat. 
Yes. A threat that you're taking seriously. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Whereas you're not going to be alone with your father anywhere. No. No, I don't intend to be alone with my father anywhere. But there was or, or my mother, for that matter. But there was a threat against you last night. You don't have to go into... Your husband and your manager, Jack Gordon, mm -hmm. has stated that there was an assassination attempt oh, yeah. on him. Mm -hmm. You have stated that your own mother tried to kill you. I just don't understand why you never took legal action in both of these cases, or did you? No, I did not. Why not? I had several attempts, uh, kidnapping attempts. And, of course, my manager, Jack Gordon, was there. And so were other people, Richard uh, Rubenstein, my publicist. And, and detectives were there as well. And thank God they were there to protect me because of what was going on. However, I must say that... Um, but that's kidnapping. What about murder? The murder was, was really terrible. That happened when I was in Reno, and that's the day we got married, when, when they had three guys out to assassinate Mr. Gordon. And later, we, later after, this, this is not in the book, but later they were also told to, to do the same to me, but not to kill me. Perhaps you can shoot her in the feet, but don't kill her. Make sure she lives, but make sure you get him. And these are things that go on constantly. It's terrible because of this. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think they're that bad. I mean... Things that would perpetuate that reputation he's developed as being bizarre. Well, would you call bizarre having a human... Well, just let's just say a brain, because he never really told me whether or not it was a human brain or not. He just wouldn't answer. I said, is it a human brain? And he wouldn't answer me. Where's his brain me. kept? And it was in the bathroom. His book, Moonwalk, really didn't scratch the surface that you've really dug up. No, because, again, this is very typical of a very dysfunctional family, and it shows you that he only wanted the public to know what he wanted them to know. The thoughts of suicide, did you have them or all of your siblings? I can't say all of my siblings had them, but a lot of them did. Yes, they did have them. They tried to commit suicide. They'd spoken about it. And it's a shame that we live in that kind of house, like I told you earlier. I know you deal with your father's philandering outside of the family. Is there a second family of sorts that he has? He has another daughter, yes. She's very proud from what I understand. She goes around and she gives interviews and tells everybody that she's... She's the sister of the Jacksons. We have never seen her. Are there any particular anecdotes from your childhood or your experiences with your father that you feel are very telling of what kind of relationship you had? When he beat me when I came home with my report card, and, and he beat me with a belt buckle and a switch, and he threw me in the bathroom and threw me on the floor. He didn't tell me why I was being beat. And my family would walk in, my brothers, and they would wash up for dinner and walk over me and not say one word to me because they were afraid that they might get beat as well. Now, when we come back, a loving family divided by millions and a murder. Family to speak out as well and come out and say, okay, this happened to us, and feel good about themselves because they are not happy inside. I know this because they speak to me and they talk and they tell me these things. It's been so told and said over and over, and we cry. Mm -hmm. And I just want everybody just to cry and let it all out and just say, okay, it happened, it's over, it's out in the open. It's terrible to live a lie. Live your life a lie the entire life. Okay. All right, Latoya, thank you. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Telling endless tales of physical and sexual abuse at the hands of an abusive father and a mother who she claims turned a blind eye. Each day, Latoya's accusations seemed to become more intense, more vivid, and then finally, last week, they became devastating. Throughout the humiliation and their torture, our Deborah Weeks was inside the Jackson parents' house, an eyewitness to Catherine and Joe Jackson's agony, as they desperately wanted to answer, then pulled back from counterattacking their own daughter. It's, it's not like they're angry. It's not like they're mad at Latoya. They're hurt. They get, uh, they get sad. They don't break down and start sobbing. But um, it hurts them. All the while, Latoya continued her devastating attacks, targeting her mother and father for sins of abuse and neglect. My mother could have stopped it. She didn't. She was the force behind it. 
I think when it was enough, she would say, Joe, that's enough. You can stop now. My father would stop. In a remarkable act of trust for a family in agony, Deborah Weeks was allowed behind the Iron Gate for quiet, one-on-one -on -one talks with Catherine and Joe Jackson that went on for hours, tense with emotion. On her first visit, Deborah was invited in for a breakfast at the kitchen table. Catherine did most of the talking. She's a very warm person. She's not very tall, very, very friendly. She was making eggs and bacon and serving at the kitchen table. And then she came and, like, leaned on the counter and just started talking. And all they talk about is LaToya on this particular day. We didn't get to pursue the point. LaToya walked out in the middle of the interview, furious that her credibility was questioned. I was hoping that this book and what I'm saying would unite the family by them coming out and saying, yes, this happened, and we're sorry that it happened. And my brothers and sisters by saying, finally, somebody spoke out. Because they're not happy. Whether they say they are or not, they're not happy. But the Jacksons say they are a happy family, and they gave us these never-before-seen photos. A birthday party last month for their father at a popular Hollywood restaurant. But LaToya was nowhere to be seen. In fact, they say it's been over a year since they've seen LaToya. Catherine often that uh, he wants to make money off of LaToya, and that he fed her all this information and, and told her to say all these things. When the book came out, and the lurid headlines were splashed across America, beamed into every home. Kate cried for a week straight. It's very painful, and it's very sad, because you see all these smiles on the outside and in front of the cameras, but it's not that way. There's a lot. Now, there was never any love expressed by my father. He didn't know how to express love. He, I don't think my father knows the meaning of love. I could be very wrong, because outsiders do tell me that He's very different with his second family, that he's very loving, and he, and he does wonderful things with them. He takes them out, he goes to the beach, he does everything with them. But with us, it was quite different. He never did anything with us. It was, it was very, very different. When he would go on the roads with the brothers, the brothers would say that my father would walk behind them, not with them, and he would say, I'm not with them. He was never there when any of us were born. And my mother had 11 children, and he wasn't there, she said, at any of the births. And it's, it's, there were happy times, too. Don't think that there were always bad times. Okay. And we'll be back in just a minute with more from LaToya Jackson. Did this physical abuse go on, and did he threaten you in any way? The physical abuse... I left home about four years ago. Michael and I left the same time. I, he left about, I think, two weeks after I did. The physical abuse was going on then, the mental and physical abuse was going on then. My, it didn't matter. Love among each other is really what held us together, stopping one another, saying, no, I love you all the time, closely to each other, and let's stick together, let's hang in there, even though we had this facade of being happy on television. Well, Toya, there, uh, you know, there was a, a passage that I read that indicated you think some of the abuse to Michael may have then manifested itself in all the changes that Michael has attempted to make in his, his appearance and other things. Do you think that that had something to do with it? The changes meaning what exactly? Well, I, I understand there was, a, there was a time when your father used to tell Michael, you know, Michael, you have a big nose, and Michael, you're ugly, and Michael, you're this, and Michael, you're that. Do you think that that has a lot to do with some of the changes, if they are real changes, that Michael's made to himself physically? Uh, yes, of course Michael has made changes. We all know that, and my father would always tell him that he had a big nose, and he would make jokes about it and constantly, and I felt bad for Michael, because it hurt him really bad. He would always say, well, I don't care to elaborate exactly sure. how he would say it, but it was just awful.